recently that a preliminary report was put out by Dr. James Millett, which actually tried to, with science, you know, refute this paper. And his conclusion, opposed to theirs, is that the material is simply paint, just paint chips. And this is where the debate comes in. And this is what makes it so interesting, the new video that's out, which can be viewed at the debunker sites, 911debunkers.blogspot.com. Mark Basile is a chemical engineer. He's worked in the industry for more than 25 years. He can be seen in the new film by architects and engineers, 9-11 Truth, 9-11 Explosive Evidence. And what he's done in these videos, he shows an ignition of one of the red gray chips. It ignites, it flashes. And he shows this compared to two just paints from his house, first of all, just a blue paint chip and a red paint chip, just to show that they, first of all, they don't flash, they don't act anywhere near the same, and they don't, most importantly, they don't create molten iron spears after the ignition. And I'll touch on that just a bit more here in a second. The other paint chip that he shows is actually a known World Trade Center primer paint taken from a monument in, it's Clarkson College in New York. So they took some of these samples of known World Trade Center primer paint, shows in the video, tries to ignite this. It doesn't flash in any way, it just turns black, no ignition, no molten iron spears. Now, Mark was the first person to discover that when these chips were heated to about 430 degrees centigrade, they created molten iron spears, which implies a high temperature chemical reaction, like of about 1,000 degrees centigrade. So, Millett, in this preliminary report he has released, will not do these ignition tests. And I think that it's really telling that he won't, because if he is testing the same material, and there's a lot of evidence to show that he's not testing the same material, but if he was, we would easily see by him doing the similar video if he was testing the same material, because if it's the same, it will ignite in the same way. Then we would at least know that he's testing the same material, but if he wasn't testing the same material, obviously it's not going to ignite from everything we can see, because we've found no other paint that does this. And even if he was testing the same material, he would then be forced to explain the molten iron spears. Well, see, and not to interrupt you, but I just want to ask, I mean, I find it hard to believe that Millett would just refuse to do it without giving some kind of explanation. Has he given any kind of attempt at a reasonable explanation of why he wouldn't perform the same test in the name of science? Yes, he believes that the presence, and it's agreed, that the presence of elemental aluminum would be needed for these chips to be nanothermite. The ingredients needed would be iron oxide and nanoaluminum. And so, you know, the original paper by Jones and his company, et cetera, all, they, to show that it wasn't an aluminosilicate, which is, or kaolinite, which is a pigment used in paints, to show that it wasn't an aluminosilicate, they took the chips and they soaked them in a paint solvent called methyl ethyl ketone. And when they did this, the silicon and the aluminum separated to show that they're not chemically bound together, therefore it's not an aluminosilicate. He did this same test and got completely different results, no separation. So what's that tell you? Somebody's either messing up in their methodology, testing different materials, or lying. And that's the thing, you know, there's a totally different result there. And he says because it didn't separate, there is no elemental aluminum, therefore it's not thermite and he doesn't need to do the ignition test. 